Um, welcome to today's lesson, which you'll be learning about the water cycle. Um, I do ask that you guys get all of these materials listed on the screen. Um, if you have a family member or a friend who's available, you could ask them to get these for you. We'll be using them later in one of our activities, but it'd be good to have them set aside so we're ready to go. And these items are also in the chat box. Um, Ryan, could you repost these as well um, in case somebody did not see them? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So my name is Elizabeth Simmermeyer. I am from Franklin County, Indiana, which is about two and a half hours southeast of here. And my favorite ice cream flavor is chocolate. So now I'd like to get to know you guys. If you wouldn't mind typing in the chat box your name, where you're from, and your favorite ice cream flavor. And then we can get to know each other a little bit more. And you might even discover that you live next to somebody that's also in this lesson. So go ahead and type in the chat box and I'll read the answers as they come in. So Ryan is from Florida and his favorite ice cream flavor is between butter pecan and chocolate. Those good choices. Is anybody else willing to share? Okay, somebody's is Trudy Blue. It's a dairy free ice cream. I have not heard of that, but I'll be sure to check it out. Okay, and then we have Kedron from Wolcott, Indiana, and he likes, and they like coconut chocolate ice cream. I've never heard of that, but it sounds good. Okay, and then Yuen, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, is from West Lafayette and their favorite ice cream flavor is blueberry, cheese, or vanilla, okay? And then Neil lives in Walcott, Indiana and his favorite ice cream is the most expensive kind, okay? All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Nice to meet all of you. So today's schedule, we're first gonna talk about what role water plays and then we're going to talk about the steps of the water cycle process. And then you'll be able to design, design your own artificial water cycle. And then we'll learn about protecting our water on earth. And then we'll conclude the lesson. Does anybody have any questions? If you could give me a thumbs up um, in the chat box or just let me know that you don't have any questions and we're good to move forward. If you do have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move forward. So first of all, I wanna ask what role does water play in our lives? So when you think of water, what do you think of? You can type in the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself and share out loud as well. So when you think of water, how does it play a role in your life? What would happen if we did not have water? Water's in the sink, in our body, and sea, and plants, yep. And John Paul is drinking water. Okay, and then we have somebody who loves to fish, so they love lakes. So yeah, water is all around us and it's an important part of our lives, whether we're drinking it or we're swimming in it or we're getting fish out of it. So I have a few pictures that I wanna show you guys.
Okay, so what do those pictures have in common? I'll go through them one more time. Yep, so they all have water. So there's a chicken drinking water, a rice field, an onion field, a corn field, cattle, soybean field, and a cranberry harvest. Yep, so these are all agriculture pictures. So agriculture is found in plants and animals, how we feed the world, it's all around us. And all of these um, practices require water. So water is basically the basis of life, right? So we have this water all around us, but where does it come from? Does anybody know? A cloud, yep. So how does it get to the cloud? Does anybody know? Rain, yep. So it rains from clouds, and then we have water on earth, but then how does that water get back to the cloud? It evaporates, right. Okay, so we're gonna learn about the water cycle, which is the process of raining and evaporating. So there are several parts of the water cycle. Do you guys know anything about the water cycle? Do any of these words sound familiar or you might already know what they mean? Okay, so we have some people that know. So I'm gonna go through each step of the water cycle and give you a little bit more information. So we first have precipitation, and this is when water is released from the clouds, and that can be in the form of rain, snow, sleet, hail, you name it. Next, we have runoff. So as you see in this picture, um, there's water, it precipitates, and lands on the earth, and then it runs off um, hills and mountains and structures. So this is water that runs down the surfaces on earth. Next, we have infiltration. Does anybody know what this is? Okay, so this is when the water hits the earth, some of it runs down the surface, but some of it soaks into the surface. So this is when the soil is absorbing water. So where does that water go once it's in the soil? So we, we have this thing called an aquifer, and this is a body of rock and or sediment that holds groundwater. So once the water soaks into the soil, it's held in these um, empty spaces, and this water is called groundwater. Okay, so next we have evaporation. So precipitation lands on earth, it's in the form of a liquid, but then we have evaporation occurs. So warm sunlight will hit this um, water in the form of a liquid, and then it'll change the liquid into a gas. And we call this water vapor. So the warm sunlight heats these water molecules and they escape as a gas, and this is called water vapor. So where does that water vapor go? So another way for water to evaporate is through this thing called transpiration. So this is when, when you think of plants, they soak up water from their, in their roots, they transport the water throughout the plant, and then they release these water molecules in the form of water vapor through their leaves. So that's transpiration. So that's another way that water evaporates and turns into water vapor. So now we have this water vapor, which is water in the form of a gas state. So when the water vapor meets cold air, it changes from a gas back to a liquid. And this is when we see clouds form. And then when the clouds get really heavy, they precipitate and the cycle starts over again. So we start out with precipitation and then it evaporates and turns from a liquid to a water vapor, which is gas. 
And then it condenses because it hits cold air and turns from a water vapor back into a liquid. And then the cycle continues. Does anybody have any questions on the water cycle? Again, you can unmute yourself or type in the chat box. Did that make sense to everybody or do you have any questions? Want anything farther explained? Does the water cycle have a starting point? Good question. So when we think of cycles, they're always continuous. Um, so like start in the cloud or the sea. So there's not necessarily a starting point just because it's a constant loop. So the water in the clouds goes to the sea, the water in the sea goes to the clouds. So it's a continuous cycle. So there's not necessarily a starting point. Is there any loss during the water cycle? So that's a really good question. And we'll touch on that a little bit later when we talk about water pollution. Okay, good question. Anything else? If not, we're gonna go forward. So we're going to design our own artificial water cycle. So hopefully you're able to um, get started and you have these items in front of you. So you're gonna need an empty plastic water bottle, a plastic cup, blue food coloring, a permanent marker, a liquid measuring cup, ice cubes, water and paper towels. If you guys could let me know in the chat box, if you're ready to go, we'll go ahead and get started. If not, I can give you a couple minutes to gather your supplies. Okay, we'll wait a couple minutes then. Okay, is everybody else ready to go? If so, we'll go ahead and get started. So this is what your final product is gonna look like. So keep this in mind as we move forward with the direction. Okay, so step one, so you have your water bottle. You're gonna add a drop of blue food coloring. And if you don't have blue food coloring, it's okay. You can use any color. Yes, you want the water bottle to be empty. So you can dump the water out if it's full. And then we'll go to the next step. Step two is fill the water bottle with two thirds cups of water. So depending on where you guys are at, it might be easiest to do this over a sink um, or a bowl so you don't spill any of the water. It's easiest to use a liquid measuring cup, but if you just have a regular measuring cup, that will work as well. And you can kind of mix up the water to mix in the food coloring.
Okay, is everybody good to go to the next step? Okay, we'll go to the next step. Please let me know if you get behind and you need to slow down. Can you zoom in? Yes, we will try to zoom in. Is this better? Okay, they said that's good. Okay. okay, so we go to step three, which is tighten the lid on the water bottles. So make sure it's really tight and then flip it upside down. So it's like this. Next, you're going to use the permanent marker to draw clouds on the bottle. So you can decorate it however you want. Okay, so can you guys see this? Might be kind of hard to tell on the video. Yeah. It's on close on the, yeah. Okay. All right, so next we're going to move on to step five. So you're gonna place the water bottle upside down in the empty cup, just like this. And then you're gonna place two ice cubes on top of the water bottle, so right here. And I do not have ice cubes, but I have an ice pack. So you'll just place the ice cubes right on top. And you might have to move the water bottle a bit to get it to stand up. And you only need as many ice cubes as what will sit on the top. My So I'm having issues getting mine to stand up just because of the ice pack. So just place ice cubes on top of the water bottle and then place it in a sunny location. So I understand that it's after six o'clock. Um, so the sun is starting to go down. So if you have a sunny window, you can place it there or you can place it under a light. Um, so if you have like a table lamp or something, you can place it under there because you want it to get warm. And you're gonna leave it in that place for an hour. So we're not going to be on this lesson for um, another hour. So you guys will be able to see the results of the experiment after we end the lesson. And it'll continue working um, the next few hours, even after the, after the ice cubes melt, it should continue working. Now. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, you can unmute yourself. Um, hi, so my ice cube, um, so my water bottle, it can't be balanced um, with the ice cube on top of it. Okay, um, what kind of water bottle is it? It's like the ones you buy in the store, like... The ones you can just like grab it and then um, drink it. Okay, so the top isn't flat? Not really. Okay, um, could you maybe put ice cubes like in a plastic bag and, or do oh, you have yeah. an ice pack kind of like mine? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hopefully that will work for you. If you just put them in a, because what you mostly want is the top to be cold. So however you can get the ice cubes to fit um, should work. Yeah, it's working now. Okay, good. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, we'll go ahead and move on then. Okay, so does anybody know what a hypothesis is? Okay, do you wanna tell us what a hypothesis is? You can unmute yourself if you'd like to share out loud too. Yeah, it's like a question before, um, like a question or like um, a guess, like an appropriate guess to um, what's going to happen after this experiment. Right, exactly. So in science, scientists will um, create an, a, a hypothesis which is an educated guess on what's going to happen. So they use what they know to predict how their experiment is going to um, end. So we're going to make a hypothesis about this water cycle in a bottle. What do you guys think is going to happen? And why do you think it will happen? So some things to keep in mind are we put the water bottle in a sunny location and we put ice cubes on top of it. Any ideas? Yep, so the ice cube's gonna melt. Yep. So when we have our water cycle in a bottle, we picture the blue water as an, an ocean or some body of water. So yes, so like you guys are saying in the chat box, the water is going to evaporate because there's a sun or a heat source that's causing the liquid to change from liquid to uh, gas, so water vapor. So the water will evaporate. And then the ice cubes on top cause the water vapor to condense. So remember when the water vapor um, comes in contact with cold air, it condenses and forms back into a liquid or a cloud. And then when the cloud gets really heavy, it'll precipitate. And then the cycle will start all over again. So as you guys observe the, um, your water bottle, be looking for, um, I noticed the one I did last week, there was a little cloud in the top of the water bottle. It was kind of hard to see, but you could see it if you really look. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and it is important to note that with all science experiments, they don't always go as planned, um, but scientists have to repeat their experiments multiple times. So if it didn't work the first time, feel free to try it again. And these are pretty common items that you can find around your household. So maybe keep trying it if you're having issues. And if something doesn't work right, maybe try a different, set it in a different place. Um, or try some different things. Okay, so the cloud in the bottle. So since it's such a small um, bottle, it's not gonna be a huge white cloud that we see in the sky. It's gonna be very vague. You can barely see it. Um, and since we don't have, when we think of clouds outside, they're huge, miles long. So we're not going to have that big of a cloud in this bottle just because we have such little water. So it's going to take some time for the water to evaporate. And if you want to try this um, like tomorrow when you'll have a longer day with more sun, you can do that and it might be more effective. And then you can just continue adding ice to the top um, so that you get more of a cloud and it'll be more visible. So hopefully that answers your questions. Yeah, it'll kind of, yeah, it'll look like fog. Good point. Yep. So you'll really have to look for it. 
Does anybody else have any questions? Okay. We'll go ahead to our next activity. So when we think about the water cycle, we've talked about how important water is because we swim in it, we drink it, we go fishing in it. Um, we give it to our cows to drink. We need it to produce uh, crops that sustain life. So why is it important to protect water? Does anybody have any thoughts? What would happen if we didn't protect our water source? Okay, because the water we can use is limited. Yep, no water you die, very good point. So I have some questions for you guys. So what is a natural resource? Any thoughts about this? Something that you can get from nature. Yep. So this is something we find outside that's naturally made. Um, my next question is, what is the difference between a renewable resource and a non-renewable resource? So we have these resources that are made from nature. They're not man-made. And then we have renewable resources versus non-renewable. Does anybody have any idea what the differences between those two are? Yep, so renewable resource is something that you can reuse. So some examples of renewable resources are water and wind. An example of a non-renewable resource is something such as coal. So once we use our supply of coal, we can't just make more. Once it's gone, it's gone. So if water is a renewable resource and we'll always have water because the water cycle continues to repeat itself and produce more water, we're recycling it. Why do we need to protect our water if it's um, renewable? Okay, you can unmute yourself if you have a question. Yeah, so if the if you said the water cycle will keep going, um, go, 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 go for millions of years, but then um, the water's not limited, so like, so it is reusable for years and years. Right. Yes. Yep, it's a renewable resource, so we'll always continue to have it because we have the water cycle that. But then, what's the point of cycles. protecting water? Because the water cycle will um, go, 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 go for millions of years. What's the point of protecting it? Um, I think if you read the newest chat, um, that'll answer your question. So when we contaminate water, that slows the water cycle process down, and um, pollutes our water. So it becomes unable to be used. So we'll get into that. That's a really good point. So like um, she mentioned, if the water cycle is continuous, then why do we need to protect it? What's the importance of that? And somebody said, because we can contaminate it. So this is water pollution. So this is where, um, does anybody know what water pollution is before I jump in? Do you want to talk about water pollution? Share what you know. It's like polluting water, like putting trash in the water when you go to the beach and then like using so much soap and then like uh, wasting water when you don't need to. Yep, good, good point. So when we have water pollution, this can be of uh, many different ways we can pollute water. So too much trash in the water, chemicals can get in the water, um, oil spills. So all of these things basically ruin our water. And water pollution causes us not to be able to use it anymore. 
So when water is polluted, it slows down the water cycle. So water isn't able to evaporate as fast if it's full of pollution. And also, yes, so polluting the water makes it unusable. So we can't drink polluted water because it's full of these chemicals um, or impurities that we, our body cannot process. So we really want clean, pure water. Yep, so we don't want any chemicals. So we kind of already mentioned this. You guys said trash, chemicals. Um, can anybody think of anything else? Yes, please feel free to unmute yourself. So, um, so if, I don't know why we started the discussion, but um, today at school, my teacher said that he lived kind of like outer country, like not in like city, but like in country. It, and then um, his house, the water is so bad. Like there's like chemicals and stuff. So, um, so he can't um, drink drink water from his own house and then um, he has to get the water from the school. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, good, good discussion. So a lot of the water that we drink, so um, our water all comes from different places depending on where you live. So you can get city water that comes from the city or you could have well water. Um, and well water isn't gonna be purified as much as city water. So depending on where you live, that will play a role in how clean your water is. And it also depends on what's around you. Um, so can you guys think of any big water polluters out there? So I'm thinking about like factories, if factories, release um, chemicals into a water supply that's close to your house, you might have more polluted water than somebody else. Okay, somebody um, commented, yep. So a city in Michigan, Flint, there was too much lead and many people drank the chemical and got sick. Yeah, so these are all causes of water pollution. And these are all things to keep in mind when we um, find our water sources. Good point. So how does, we kind of talked about this, how does pollution impact life on earth? So we have all of this water pollute, this polluted water. How does that impact not only us, but the plants, the fish, the animals? Somebody mentioned that they like to fish. Do you think that fish can survive in polluted water? No, yep. So I always think of a commercial on TV, I think it's for Dawn Dish Soap, where there's an oil spill and they have this little baby duckling that they're using Dawn Dish Soap to give a bath because he's covered in oil. And if he's covered in oil, he cannot survive. Yep, so if you have fish that are in polluted water, um, they'll die and they're also unsafe to Yep, good point. Anything else that you guys know about water pollution? Okay, so now that we've talked about water pollution, do you guys know what water purification is? So we have all of this water pollution around us. Now we need to purify it. So water purification is the process of depolluting and cleaning water. So how do you guys think water pur purification occurs? Any thoughts? Think about water treatment plants. What do you think the water has to go through to clean it? Filtering? Yep. 
So do you think they just have like a, do you, are you guys familiar with like Brita filters? Do you think they just run the water through a Brita filter and it's safe to drink? So there's different ways that water can be purified. Um, when you think about like, when you have spaghetti and you, after you cook spaghetti, you dump it in a strainer to drain all the water out. So that's one way of water purification. So there's different screens that the water goes through to collect all the trash and the large particles. And the screens can be so small that like, you wouldn't think water would get through them, but it does. So it collects those large molecules and those large items. How else do you think water is purified? It'd be really hard to filter out chemicals if those are in liquid form as well. How do you think these are treated? Any ideas? So water treatment plants treat the water to get rid of those harmful chemicals and those other harmful molecules that are found. Like somebody mentioned lead being in the water. So water treatment plants work to get rid of this lead and these other harmful um, elements and substances that the body can't process. So that kind of goes into the next question of how do we purify water? So what happens, how does um, polluted water impact the water cycle? Any thoughts on this? I think I mentioned it a little bit earlier. So if water is so polluted, it's gonna be harder for the water molecules to evaporate because they're mixed with so many different um, substances and other chemicals and molecules that it's harder for the water to evaporate and start the water process, the water cycle process again. Do you guys have any other thoughts on how we can protect our water on earth and why it's important? Okay, I have one more question. What happens if we cannot purify our water? We die, okay. Yep, so if we pollute all of our water supply and it becomes so polluted that we can't, our bodies can't process it, we obviously need water to survive, so that's gonna cause a whole bunch of issues. Um, yep. Any other thoughts? Do you guys have any questions about the water cycle or water purification? Yep, so we will not have no source of water and the plants and humans won't survive. Is everybody good to go on? Okay. So as we wrap up with this lesson, I have one more question for you guys. How do you plan to use what you learned today in the real world? So after you learned about this, what are you gonna, how are you gonna apply it to your life? No wasting, yep, that's a good one. Or polluting. Any other thoughts? Okay, so yeah, there's always gonna be articles out there um, and news stories 
that share about how water pollution and trash in the oceans is killing animals. Um, one thing that I've always tried to do is if you get like a like a six pack of bottles of pop, um, they come with those plastic rings around the top. I always like cut the rings apart so that if it does end up in the water somewhere, it won't like, um, I guess, choke any animals and they won't be able to get tangled up in them. So it's small things like that that you can do. Any other thoughts of how you're going to use what you learned today? Okay, I do have a link for you guys that I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing my screen and put it in the chat box. Okay, if you guys can take a few minutes to go to this um, Google form and fill that out. I'll give you a few minutes and then, then when you're done, if you could just type done in the chat box. Yes, it's a Google form. Yep. Let me know if it doesn't work.
Again, if you guys could just type in the chat box once you finish the Google form. Okay, I think of everyone. Oh, I think we have one more. So we'll wait till everyone's done. Okay, guys, that concludes our lesson about the water cycle. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something. Um, I do have one more survey for you guys to fill out just to give me feedback on the lesson and how it can be improved. Um, so if you guys could take another couple minutes to fill that out. Um, I'll stay on for a few more minutes. If you guys have any questions, um, please feel free to unmute yourself at this time. Thank you.